All right, I'd like to call this meeting of the West West Milwaukee School Board to order. Uh, Miss Lee, could you please lead us in the pledge? <clears throat> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, Suzette, would you please pause, call the roll? Yes. Mr. Burns. Present. Mr. Becker. Present. Ms. Kaiser. Here. Mr. Keller. Here. Ms. Deal. Here. Mrs. Carr. Here. Mr. Sickett. Present. Mrs. Lee. Here. President Lee. Here. The draft notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the open meeting laws of the state of Wisconsin. Do we have any modifications to the agenda this evening? Uh, no changes this evening. All right. So we'll move right on to the election of board officers. And that starts with the president. All right. Um, thank you. And according to board policy, um, the election of the president is facilitated by the superintendent each year. And so what we'll do is um, go through the process and call for nominations. Um, you'll hear each step being called three times and then we'll close nominations and we do a vote. Um, if there is consensus, then we simply have to call for a consensus vote. Um, and, and if not, then we um, actually do a vote on little slips. So a secret ballot vote. Um, is the process. So with that, I will open the um, floor for nominations for the uh, position of president of the school board. Mm -hmm. I nominate Noah Lee. Second. Right. Any other nominations for the position of <coughs> president? Other nominations for the position of president? With no other nominations, I'll assume that, that that is consensus. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, we have president. Congratulations, Noah. And then I'll turn it back over to you, yep. you to facilitate the rest. <clears throat> all right. Thank you very much. I just want to thank the board again for their vote of confidence in me to be able to move forward through this year. Um, I appreciate that. I will do my very best to make sure that I am uh, representing the board and everyone else here in our district as best as possible. So thank you very much. So we'll move forward on with our next nomination. So I'd like to open up nominations for vice president. I'd like to nominate Brian Keller for vice president. Second. I'll second. All right, we have nomination second. Do we have any other nominations for vice president? Any other nominations for vice president? Seeing none, assuming consensus. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Brian, once again, Vice President, congratulations. Thank you, everybody. All right, we'll move on with Treasurer. I look for a nomination for Treasurer. I'd like to nominate Kristen Kaiser. Second. All right, nominated and second. Any other nominations for Treasurer? Any other nominations for treasurer? All right, all those in favor for Kristen? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, congratulations, Kristen. Thank you. All right, and then we'll open up nominations for clerk, and I would like to nominate Jeff Sickich. Second. Thank you. Any other nominations for clerk? Any other nominations for clerk? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, Jeff, congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we can move on to the superintendent's report. Great, um, thank you and congratulations to the officers and welcome everybody. Um, we'll start with the superintendent's report with 7.1, which is a report from West Allis Central High School student representatives. We can't, we can't even, I can't hear you either. Oh, so then we must have something a little bit. Is that better? Okay, um, so we will begin with 7.1 uh, report from the West Dallas Central High School student representative. Good evening. My name is Anaya. Thank you for having us here tonight. I'm going to share information about our academic and achievement initiatives. We started off this semester with our annual test fest events for our ninth through 11th graders. This year we improved the events and utilize the official practice ACT exams to receive more accurate data and score reports. 
Students and staff can use this data to see which er what areas of academics students can learn and grow in. The 12th graders were given options that would support their post-secondary paths. The 12th grade students were given the choice to take the UWM placement test, ASVAB, resume development, and other career planning options. Just this past week, our ninth and 10th graders completed their DPI required Aspire testing. Students were greatly engaged in this process. The AP testing began the week of May 2nd. Testing students are taking AP exams from the 14 different courses. We have 267 students enrolled to take the AP exam this year. Currently, we are holding a 1,000 point challenge by grade level. The grade that wins gets a picnic. Each earns points for best attendance, best school spirit, and positivity. We held a big teacher appreciation week with signs, thank yous, handouts, and lots of food for our staff. We know we have great teachers and we're thankful for them. We are excited to announce that our school made the top 50 in the Vans Custom Culture Competition. We are the only school in the state of Wisconsin to be selected. The art students had a few weeks to design their original pair of vans around a given topic. We have a chance of winning $50,000 for our art department and a celebration for our school. Between March 7th through March 18th, we held 12th grade career and college visits to Alverno, Southeastern Wisconsin Carpenters Training Institute, MATC Downtown, Marquette, Mount Mary, and UW-Milwaukee. We held on-site admissions for UW-Milwaukee UW Platteville and UW Parkside. It was exciting to be able to have our students get on campuses again and have some great hands-on career experiences. Good evening. My name is Maria Rodriguez Torres. I'm going to share information regarding our clubs and events. On Friday, April 1st, West Dallas Central hosted its annual March Madness event, the first one since 2019 due to the pandemic. A big shout out goes to Mrs. Kaylee Sexton, who organized the entire event and the week of fun leading up to it. Throughout the week, students and staff showed off their school pride by wearing their class colors, putting on their favorite Hawaiian shirt, rocking a jersey, and repping their bulldog gear. During lunch, students and staff turned on their competitive sides by showing off their Papa Shot skills and they attempted to break the old record of 143 points. On the day of March Madness, the students were treated to a two hour pep rally, which featured games sponsored by the National Guard, a performance by our amazing dance team, and the usual basketball tournament craziness that only March Madness could inspire. Sophomore Noel Boulot and Tristan Johnson organized a West Ellis Central version of Denim Day, a day designated to honor and show support for victims of sexual assault or abuse. They collaborated with other organizations in the area to get stickers and information for students and spent the week educating students about the origin of the day and the realities of sexual violence. They also created a sign up sheet for students to pledge their support for survivors of sexual violence. On Denim Day, the students of West Alice Central came to school rocking their denim to show their support. This year, sophomore Sean Rivera placed high enough at the HOSA Regionals to compete at the 2022 State Leadership Conference which was held in the Dells during April. Sean did an amazing job at state and we're so incredibly, incredibly proud of him for all the work he put into this year. Way to go, Sean. We are proud of our SpongeBob musical. It was well attended by students, parents, and community members. Our prom is being held on May 21st, 2022 at Sir Paul. We are having a great America field trip for eligible seniors and our Go Green students. Good evening, my name is Janiah Brown. I'm going to share information about our sports team. The following student athletes were recognized on the Woodland All-Conference teams for winter. In girls basketball on the first team, Trishina Brown. In girls basketball on the second team, Marquila Bowles. In girls basketball as a scholar athlete, Tori Brown. In boys basketball on the second team, Najashi Tolfrey and Grayson, Grayson Fritzel. In boys basketball on the honorable mention team, Josiah Gilly and boys basketball as a scholar athlete, Najashi Tolfrey, and wrestling on the first team, Amadi Cameron, and wrestling on the second team, Brody Dressen and Gustavo Dominguez, and wrestling on the honorable mention team, Nathan Frollo and Hayden Shalabi, and wrestling as a scholar athlete, Will Kornacki, and dance as a scholar athlete, Hannah Donegan, and cheer as a scholar athlete, Mallory Malvitz, and bowling as a scholar athlete, Nathan Rapp. 
We would also like to recognize Macy Freeland, who is among the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel football softball, softball honorable mention player of the week. Macy went seven for seven with five RBIs as the team's catcher threw out each run who attempted to steal a base on her during that previous week. Macy was also selected to participate in the Wisconsin Fast Pitch Softball Coaches Association Senior Night All-Star Game this June in, with the Wisconsin Doves. Congratulations on a successful season to Macy and all of our softball students. Looking ahead, the spring sports are all midway through their seasons are an all encouraging you all to help them pray for a more favorable weather ahead. Please consider supporting our student athletes in track, softball, baseball, girls soccer, and golf by attending their games this meets this season. Of note, there will be an annual battle of West Allis varsity baseball game taking place on Thursday, May 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. on Milkman Field at the Rec Rock Complex in Franklin. Thank you for your continued support of the Bulldog Athletics. There's a lot going on at West Allis Central. Thank you for letting us share with you tonight. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Thanks to all three of you. Yeah. Um, it's a great report. It's fun to hear about all the amazing things happening at Central. It's a great Thank job. You Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. If you want, please feel free to stay if you want. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I will go on then to 7.2, the legislative update. Uh, and Wisconsin's ESSER 3 plan received final approval from the Department of Education, so the U.S. Department of Education. Um, it's, it refers to the federal COVID relief funding that was allocated to K-12 education under the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, uh, so ARPA, uh, passed by Congress in March 2021. So states were required by the ARPA to submit plans for how they would spend those um, this funding and get those plans approved by USED, so the Department of Ed, so that has taken place. Um, the state superintendent convenes a new group to tackle early literacy challenges. So last Thursday, state superintendent, Dr. Jill Underly convened the first meeting of a new state superintendent's reading advisory council. And Wisconsin public schools received $40.6 million in library aid from common school fund distribution. So last week, school districts across our state received a record $40.6 million in library aid, aid which is dispersed annually to public school libraries across the state in April. This year's allocation was paid out on Monday, April 25th. Each school district receives an allocation based on its reported resident consensus count and the per pupil child amount. And there were no updates at the federal level for legislation. We'll move on to 7.3, which is the Board of Education recognitions. There's quite a few here this evening. First of all, congratulations to all of our MAPC. So that's the Metropolitan Milwaukee Association of Black School Educators, 2022 Teacher of the Year Award winners. Um, and this event took place this past Friday, uh, and uh, it is quite an event to experience. Uh, it is the big ballroom down at the convention center downtown. Um, people come decked out. It is semi-formal to formal, uh, and the teachers are really kind of front and center in the whole thing. Teachers come in. Um, 182 or 87 were recognized this year, so many from Milwaukee Public Schools, but it's um, seven other surrounding school districts participate. Uh, there's a grand march where all the teachers come in, where all of their principals and all kinds of other education leaders from across the state <laughs> kind of applaud and cheer them on. And then after dinner and all of the speeches and program, then um, teachers are escorted again um, to the front by their principal where they're announced and receive a, a plaque and recognizing them as kind of their school's teacher of the year. Um, and so for us from West Allis, it was um, Lauren Olatowski from Central, Deb Bukowski at Nathan Hale, Jenny Olatowski at Dotkey, Carrie Clark at FLW, Alex Staplin at Lane, Ann Cornell at West, Jordan Pollard at Franklin, Chris Dakin at Hoover, Catherine Brommer at Horace Mann, Katie Zenz at Irving, <coughs> Robin Utke at Jefferson, Eva Kwaterski at Longfellow, Linda Dotkin at Madison, Casey Rentmeister at Mitchell, Melissa Christensen at Pershing, Morgan Noster Walker, and then Amanda Hendrickson at Wilson. And you're going to hear a couple individual kind of a little learn a little bit more about some of them as recognition from their schools. So from Madison, I'd like to recognize Linda Dot Dotkin as our latest recipient of the MAPC Teacher of the Year Award. Words cannot begin to describe the impact that Linda has on the entire Madison community. She's an incredible teacher, colleague, mentor, and friend, and is well-deserving of this prestigious award. Congratulations, Linda. 
At Dotkey, a big thank you to our head Sodexo cleaner, Teddy. Teddy is committed to keeping our building safe and clean. He shows up to work every day with a smile and a positive attitude. Teddy is flexible and adjusts quickly when we have experienced um, staffing challenges. He's also a great communicator when there are things that the building principal and custodian need to know. All in all, Teddy is a valued team member and we appreciate him being a part of the Dotkey family. So thank you to Teddy. I love that they're recognizing somebody that shows up every day and cleans. Um, what you may not know is that one of our most experienced and probably most effective youth advisors we found as a cleaner in one of our schools, right? And now he coaches and um, encourages other youth advisors. So that's Montrell. Um, and he was cleaning for us. And so now he leads the youth advisor team. So, so thanks to Teddy for doing his work. Leadership and learning from um, Deidre. We'd like to thank our students from our transition program, Luann Watkins and Sheldon Watkins, for all their work to help get our book rooms organized and ready to better care for all of our materials. They have done an amazing job. Um, communication from Amanda. Thank you to Brianna Pluta, principal at Wilson, for leading our virtual 4K info session and representing our district. Brianna does an amazing job making sure our families feel safe, welcomed, and celebrated. At West Milwaukee, Mr. Kosek and Mr. Walker, our impact and our teacher, have taken over ninth period design thinking together this year. We'd like to recognize the wonderful collaborating they've done together and their most recent project with eighth graders. The most re recent bridge building project was engaging and full of skill development. The winning design was able to withstand 500 pounds, which is pretty significant for those projects. At Horace Mann, it's all about making community connect connections. Kindergarten teacher Jenny Day invited Kristen Kerchain and, and Storm Chaser 4 van from WTMJ4 to school to kick off their weather project. All the kindergartners are ready to forecast the weather now. Third grade teachers Andrea um, Bother and Jessica Hauke and Amy Zolich have partnered with the farmer's market to showcase their learning of goods and services, recycling, and the role of money. So head to the market on May 19th and May 31st to see the learners in action and what they created. At Pershing, Melissa Christensen has been a dedicated educator for 22 years and an integral part of our Pershing community for the last 18. In a role as a reading specialist and teacher in charge, Melissa is highly respected by all teachers at Pershing as a valued resource and partner for our increasing engagement and providing purposeful differentiated instruction to make learning personal for each student. Her passionate efforts are always in the best interest of students and grounded in research and best practice. Melissa is a tremendous asset to our West Dallas, West Milwaukee community. Congratulations to Met, uh, Melissa for receiving the Metropolitan Milwaukee Alliance of Black School Educators Teacher of the Year Award. And then at Walker, Morgan Noster, a first through third grade team teacher at Walker, has been nominated for the Metropolitan Milwaukee Alliance of Black School Educators for the Teacher of the Year Award. Morgan has been an educator and worked at Walker School for nine years. She has been nominated for her work with bringing success, success skills to life at Walker and her work with the school's character committee. Congratulations, Morgan, and thank you for everything you do for the Walker School community. So a great set of recognitions for this meeting. And then uh, um, 7.4, just some quick updates and information items. So on April 25th, we heard from two members of the public regarding the 4.7% base wage increase that um, we negotiated with our teachers association and are providing for all of our teachers for next year. So this increase is the maximum allowable based on Wisconsin Act 10. And we're actually, even though it's criticized, we're proud that our fiscal planning and management provided the opportunity of, for us to offer the maximum increase and for us to move towards our strategic plan goal of offering at least the average teacher salary in our area, right? So we're proud that we're actually in a position where we're able to accomplish that. We also heard a member of the public question the legality of the, the negotiations with our teacher association. Our notice of negotiations and the agreement the board approved followed the same process and set of practices as used in the past and our legal counsel has not objected. So we are absolutely confident that negotiations are legal and appropriate. Then um, other updates, even though we don't do the kind of return to in-person learning related to the pandemic anymore, um, if you're curious, our COVID um, percentage district-wide, and again, it's percent positive, for it was on this is Friday's numbers was 0.19 district wide and the highest individual school is at 0.50 so a half a percentage point and that's West Milwaukee right now. Uh, so then this evening, our board, um, we may hear some things about school consolidations because we're in that part of the process So our board recently completed two workshops on this topic. 
And these efforts, I just want to kind of put it in context for the public, they're tied to our long range facility master plan, the development of which was set forth as a goal in our strategic plan, right? So that's how these pieces kind of fit together. So in our five year strategic plan, the board approved um, the expectation that we develop a long range facility master plan, which we did, and then the board approved it, right? And in that facility master plan, um, is the idea of consolidating schools. And it's really, again, to address declining enrollment, aging buildings, but in a manner that supports fiscal stability and minimizes impact of consolidations and students and teachers, right? So options with, consistent with these efforts were presented in the recent workshops. You know, tonight we anticipate um, there'll be public comments with feedback about the various schools being considered for consolidation. And we, and, and we welcome that. That is part of the entire process. So the board has done its work with workshops. Uh, now we're turning into the more of the public part of the process. We may hear about flaws in the analysis or even flaws in the process. Again, that's entirely expected and appropriate. Uh, and, and we recognize that some of this really gets difficult. And when we talk about schools and kids, even emotional, but the end, in the end, the sum total of all the analysis and, and feedback, um, with the, you know, what we've communicated is the board should be looking for what picture emerges is that is that presents the most logical way to move forward, even though it's hard and emotional at times, right? But that doesn't mean that we're done with kind of the information part of this, right? So part of it is the public process tonight and the um, following meeting in May, and we have three information sessions coming up. One is tomorrow night at Madison, and then each um, of the subsequent weeks. Uh, where there's other opportunities for people to learn more. So Aaron will be doing an abbreviated version of just kind of the, the, the information around Madison and Wilson. That'll be tomorrow night. And then we move on to, you know, the, the Lane piece and then the Longfellow piece. So we're inviting not only the schools that are currently conversations um, at the board level for consolidation, but also schools that would receive those students um, just so that we can kind of explore the conversation a little more deeply. And then we'll share feedback from those conversations again with the board um, and, and approaching and encouraging some decision making in June, um, because if there are any, going to be any impact of those decisions um, by next September, um, the sooner we know that, the better. Uh, and so that's kind of where we are in the process and for tonight. And then finally, um, we are now in the season of what I call end of year events, right? So the uh, May and anybody that's worked in schools uh, knows how busy schools get um, with all of the celebrations and the rituals that come with kind of ending a school year. Um, and it gets busy uh, and I get invited to lots of them. And so this past uh, week, I attended the women's club luncheon uh, when they give, out, they give out scholarships to graduating seniors. And it's always fun for, for me to sit in the room when the seniors, and I know our seniors are gonna go off and do amazing things, but when they say what they're going to do and there's always a gasp that comes from the women's club, like, holy cow, these are really bright kids. So one young lady um, is, is attending Purdue to study aerospace engineering. And she said, and I'll have my private pilot's license before I leave to go to college. And I was like, what? wait, what? That's Right, that's pretty stunning what our kids are doing. So those kind of things really, I think are good feedback for us about what gets accomplished in our schools. So I'm looking forward to the various completion ceremonies and there's end of year barbecues. And then of course the high school graduations. And what I like about this year in particular, this is bringing a true sense of normalcy again, back to the end of the school year. So looking forward to all of that and seeing all of you at those events as well. And that concludes the superintendent's report. I think Dr. Luxman had one question about the, the information sessions. Are those, as far as questions go, open to any building, even though they're going to be held at one building? So we prefer that we, we focus just on the information related to that building, just because of we're trying to keep these to one hour. Um, so, and we're anticipating that there'll be a presentation of about 30, 30 plus minutes. So we should have about 20 minutes in. Q and A, um, but the, the information really will be focused. If, if somebody asks a question from a different building, we'll do our best to accommodate it, but we'll wanna um, spend the time with the people that came to hear about the impact on those particular schools. I think we need to have yeah. those sessions open to anybody because there are several conflicting schedules going on right now from my understanding. And for people who might have different nights of the week, they're available. I think it needs to be more an overarching consideration of our long-term plans, why, why all those schools are being considered. Um, it's only fair to the families to be able to get that option. So we'll do our best. Um, but again, this is, I'm trying to balance, you know, the reality of, you know, 
how much how much um, extra time people take on from here um, to engage in those information sessions. And these were added to people's schedules last week. Um, and so it really is trying to find a reasonable balance for everybody. We'll do our best to accommodate it. But again, the information is the plan is the information is focused on the school we're in and the schools, if the board decides to consolidate that particular building, the impact on the schools that would receive students. All right, so we'll move on to public comments at this point. So just uh, everyone will, who wants to address the board needs to sign up via the online form. If there's anyone listening via Zoom, uh, there should be a link in the chat to be able to sign up on the form. Uh, every person will have three minutes to address the board. Please start with your name and your address. Um, the board will not have any back and forth discussion, but if there is a question that is asked, or statement that needs clarification that is readily available that can be provided, but there will not be additional questions after that. Uh, so with that, I would like to start with the first person on the list, which is going to be uh, Ms. Dana Azalina. <clears throat> Hello, Dana Azalina, 3307 South 90th Street, Milwaukee. Uh, Monica and I will be speaking on behalf of the Wilson staff. I've worked in the West Dallas, West Milwaukee School District for 18 years, all of which has been at Wilson School. I've attended many board meetings and presented at quite a few, but I've never spoken during public comments until now because I feel so strongly about Wilson School. I've been through the changes of the West Dallas, West Milwaukee School District for 18 years. I often have people ask me why I've stayed in the district since I could teach in other districts and make more money. My family and my friends often ask me why, why do you stay at Wilson School in West Dallas? But they don't understand because they don't work at Wilson School. You would understand though, if you were at Wilson. We are a family. Over the years, we have built a family stronger each and every year. We have received awards together, including the 2008 National Blue Ribbon School and many School of Promise recognitions and some have even watched an Olympic gymnast grow up at Wilson School. Over the years, we have had many successful Wilson graduates. I know many staff members have kept in contact with former Wilson students, families, and will continue to do so. I've attended many high school graduation celebrations of former students and love to keep a connection with the Wilson families past and present. It is because of the Wilson families, I ask that you reconsider your decision to close three elementary schools in our district. One of the goals of these consolidation talks was disrupt as few students as possible. Wilson has approximately 370 students, all of whom I believe would have to be bused to a neighboring school, which would be an additional cost. They would be spread to as many as three different schools under the current considerations, ultimately creating an elementary desert. Our families and students have been through so much since COVID, asking our Wilson families and students to uproot themselves in two years after what we've all just went through, seems not in the best interest of our families. West Dallas, West Milwaukee School District always speaks of what's in the best interest of our students. For this reason, I hope you will reconsider Wilson as a school in need of, of consolidation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Timer. Can I reconsider the president? <laughs> <laughs> the ship has sailed. <laughs> I mean, we should have texted it. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Um, next is Miss Monica Lewicki. Hi, um, I'm Monica Lewicki, 2072 South 107th Street, West Dallas. Um, so I am continuing to speak on behalf of our Wilson staff. Um, I want to speak to the one of a kind staff at Wilson School. I personally have stayed at Wilson School over the years because of the staff past and present. It is so hard to put into words the dedication they have to the students and families and to one another. This dedication is why I have stayed at Wilson. I ask you today to reconsider closing Wilson School and see how things go before jumping to close three elementary schools within our district. You would be breaking up a very cohesive staff in the district. We've spent years building a staff that works as a team both in and out of the school. We support each other and the students in our school, whether they're on our rosters or someone else's. 
This is not something we have achieved, achieved overnight. It is something we have fostered through hard work, communication, and a sense of pride in our school. With the possibility of that being, a take, with that being taken away, it is not unlikely staff will start to leave Wilson School. As was previously mentioned, we certainly aren't here for the check. That we can get anywhere. Not having the community we have created is a motivation to move on and start somewhere new. My colleagues are top-notch educators, and I know how hard it is today to find dedicated and experienced staff. I know many of my colleagues have stayed at Wilson School because of the camaraderie among staff. Not to mention that our fearless leader, Ms. Pluta, has created an even stronger community at Wilson these past two years. I also understand your data was taken from two years ago. Because of the pandemic, I feel the numbers of the students may change in the next few years, and I do not want our district to close too many elementary schools too soon. Overcrowding any particular school may cause issues with class sizes and with finding space for art, gym, music, STEM, special education spaces, et cetera. In closing, one thing I would like you to consider is the discrepancies we have found in the CIP the building assessment, and what is present at Wilson. One basic example is there is a classroom listed and the first floor blueprint that simply doesn't exist at our school. Another example is some of the classrooms are listed as having carpet that do not, and some are listed as not having carpet that do. These are two of examples of discrepancies that are easily visible and cause me some concern. Although these may seem like simple mistakes, these have an impact on the financial totals that are being used to make this decision. As a concerned part of the Wilson School staff and the Wilson community, I would encourage you to go through this data and information with a fine tooth comb. Before you consider, continue to consider closing Wilson, please take a deep dive into the data and plans that have been presented. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a file that that is that being sent to us or yet yeah, leave a copy for us? Um, this is just the CIP and the building assessment that's on the board's website, but I can leave all my notes if you want. I'd like to see the notes. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Steve Broadwell. Steve West Ohio Court, New Berlin. Uh, counselors post on the district Facebook page proclaim great promise here as you dismantle systems that are not serving our students and families appropriately. You refuse to answer when I ask what systems need to be dismantled, so let me help you out. First, according to Marty's mentor on racism, that grifting anti-American Ibram Kendi, systems in this country set up by white people to oppress people of color, need to be dismantled. Kendi says the only way to accomplish this is to be an anti-capitalist. He and others of his ilk whom Deidre had leaders study in a 2020 district equity workshop seek to divide us and remove the family as the authority for moral and emotional guidance and deference to a Marxist state that would own our kids. The 80 Kendi books this district wasted money on is just more evidence of this administration's fiscal irresponsibility. Second, <clears throat> biblical truths and biological science understood by most sane people that there are only two genders needs to be dismantled also. Like our new Supreme Court Justice, you seem confused by this since you would not answer my, question, my request to define a man and a woman. At its most basic, a man has a penis and a woman has a vagina and bears children. Your trans uh, transgender policy reflects this confusion as it states sex is a label a person is assigned at birth often based on a medical professional's interpretation of the newborn's physical characteristics. What is there to interpret? Your policy provides a partial list of 12 pronoun examples of possible child gender claims. Cisgender is so passe, right? This group contagion is not like other psychoses such as cutting, anorexia, or even the new social construct of furries as kids try to cope with adolescent identity crisis or personal psychological issues. I've asked to what grade you introduce transgenderism to kids in this new age non-binary sick realm we find ourselves in. 
You said you don't, which is a lie considering the books you have in district libraries. A search of our library database using the word transgender reveals 55 entries regarding this subject. Some of these books are in grade schools like A is for activists where T stands for transgender and L stands for LGBTQ, first grade. This is all part of the SEL vehicle you use to infuse divisive CRT tenants of DEI and CSI into CSE into all subjects as you pursue your claimed goal of equity or equal outcomes. However, many scholars are aware of the left's ultimate Marxist agenda with all this nonsense. You're creating a generation of academically stunted, confused, and fearful kids. We may be in the bottom 10% in math and science in the state, but for, uh, by God, at least our kids will understand the role you have groomed them for as social justice activists and they will know the ever-growing plethora of new pronouns. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Brianne Fuda. I uh, debated whether I get up here. I didn't realize just how organized they would be, so I thought it'd be a lot longer here. Um, I know you're hearing from many, Oh, but I'd like to your name in, in, oh sorry yeah. Brian I haven't done this uh Brian Pluta 701 East Bridalwood Lane Oak Creek Wisconsin 54154 um I know you're hearing from many already but I'd like to offer a different perspective tonight I understand the challenging position that you are in you're representing our community of West Dallas and our community has asked you to be fiscally responsible fact is our school enrollment has continued to decline and unfortunately like many districts in our area Closing schools is inevitable. So tonight, I don't wanna to talk to you about the what. We know what we may have to do. And I understand that the what is the first step, but I'd like, to, like to us to start thinking about um, going beyond that. So I come to you tonight to talk to you about the how. Tonight, I wanna to talk to you on behalf of the staff and the families of both Wilson and Madison. Not that I have anything against Lane or Longfellow or any school within our district. Um, I was just able to have the pleasure of being a principal of both even at the same time. So I know in closing schools, sometimes it makes sense to focus on what is wrong with them, especially the actual structures of them as our buildings are quite old. I also understand that you may feel uneasy continuing to recognize the achievements and progress in these schools as it then makes it difficult to defend why you'd wanna close them. But I would argue we still need to do this. Madison has transformed their instruction. They went for more traditional teacher-led learning to learning that is more project-based, driven by student interest and agency. Much of the staff there have undergone multiple cycles of student-led coaching that has improved their practice. At Wilson, our staff has incorporated cultural responsive practices into their teaching successfully. We have developed systems of support centered around ensuring all students can be successful. And each member of Wilson understands the importance of building relationships with our families, our students, and one another. There is not one teacher I wouldn't feel confident having my own child as being educated by them. So I urge you, our school board members, as well as our district, I urge you, <clears throat> I gotta find my place here, <clears throat> to continue to celebrate the staff members because they are not gonna stop doing the amazing work they have been doing, even if they're feeling anxious with all that is happening around them. I know, and hopefully they know, that regardless of school closures, we have a place for them here in West Dallas, West Milwaukee. I feel it is our responsibility though, to begin thinking about how we will retain them through this process. And it goes beyond our teachers. I know at the last board workshop, the administrators were spoken of because when a building closes, a spot doesn't just magically open up for an admin. And trust you, trust me, I do appreciate this, being in my position. But I think we also need to think of other staff members that are assets to our school buildings that are in the same position as administrators as well. Custodians, building subs, secretaries. I think sometimes people don't quite understand the impact they can have on a building. So let me try and share a few stories. During my time at Madison, our custodian did more than wash tables. He became a part of our MTSS process, often checking in and out with students, Sorry, your time is up, but thank you very much. Yep. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Steve Harris. Uh, 
All right, thank you, Steve Harris, 3034 West Statesman Way, Franklin, Wisconsin. Uh, first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. And Brianne, thank you for the kind words about Madison. Okay. So I'm speaking on behalf of the Madison staff. And I really have um, just a few points that I want to make tonight. The first is, this is my 25th year in our district. Uh, my first year at Madison, to be honest, I didn't know a lot about Madison uh, before I went over there last summer. Um, so what I did is I asked the staff, let me know everything about Madison. And um, it would have taken me a few hours to tell you all the great things they had to say about Madison. But a few really stood out. Number one is they talked about like, it's this great park-like setting that we have this awesome green space. And that's true. Um, they talked about how the families and kids walk to school and how meaningful that is. And I know Dr. Luxman talks about that quite a bit uh, as well. And the other neat thing is um, they talked about when you're at recess and the trains that go by. Um, and just how neat that is. I have a little 4K student who comes up to me every single day when he sees the train, trains are his favorite thing. He comes up to me and he grabs on my side somewhere, my shirt, my pants, and he says, let's count the trains that go by together. Well, today it was 59. Okay, 59 cars on the train, right? So I just think that's really neat. Now, the four points that we really wanna talk about as a Madison staff, um, a lot of money and time went into the FAC team to identify which school should be consolidated. There's a 25 point system created, which I don't believe Madison was one of the bottom three schools according to the criteria. And if the criteria really doesn't matter, then why was it created in the first place? It was determined that Longfellow would close because they of their score of minus 17 points. And then that seemed to lead to a domino um, effect that then really um, kind of placed Madison uh, as one of the schools to possibly consolidate. Once again, I mentioned that we have awesome green space, we have um, great staff, um, a newer school. Second thing I wanna talk about is on June 8th, 2021, um, the FAC team did a presentation on capital improvement project budgets, but it did not include Madison. Madison was nowhere to be found. They listed every school except Longfellow and Madison. Maybe there was a good reason for that, but it really led us to wonder like, was, were decisions already made if we weren't even included on that? The third, the third point is um, the one of the guiding principles of the FAC team is how can we consolidate schools in ways that inspire and shape the education that our children and communities deserve and still be cost effective? We go back to we are consolidated because, because of declining enrollment, which in the long run comes down to dollars and cents, and everyone gets that. But then why aren't we looking at consolidating um, the different schools that have a higher price tag than Madison does? And then our fourth point is Recently, we had our 4K preview night. One of our 4K parents who lives in the Madison area came in and said they had the choice to either go to the Walker or Madison 4K preview night. And that's very disconcerting to our staff as to why that is the case, if they are Madison residents. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Rob Hepburn Gray. Good evening, Rob Pepper and Gray, 8502 West Lapham Street, West Ellis. Uh, I'm here to uh, add my voice to what I now see to be the uh, numerous voices here to speak about uh, the, uh, the excellent community that uh, exists at Wilson Elementary. Uh, I myself am a father to a uh, a kindergarten student who is uh, lucky, lucky enough to be in uh, the award-winning uh, Miss Henderson's uh, <laughs> kindergarten class, um, uh, and a fellow educator who works in the city of, of Milwaukee. I, uh, I must say I am a newcomer to this community. I, uh, my family relocated uh, to West Dallas uh, just last year. Uh, but in this last year, as a community member and as a father of a student attending Wilson Elementary, I have been uh, overwhelmed both by the quality of education that my daughter receives uh, and the, the warmth of the community that has been cultivated at, uh, at Wilson. Again, just a, a testament to this community, the number of, of representatives that I, uh, I see here tonight. 
Um, uh, a number of points have already been raised tonight. I just want to uh, emphasize several uh, and add a, a, a couple more. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very impressed not only with the core education that my daughter receives, but also with the arts and music programs that are uh, available at Wilson Elementary. Uh, I also want to recognize that Wilson Ele uh, Elementary serves as a as a focal point and, and meeting place for the broader uh, broader community. Uh, the Wilson is located in the Conrad Gardens um, neighborhood, uh, which has just recently created a neighborhood organization which uses the Wilson building as its meeting point. In addition, there is a brand new Girl Scout troop uh, at Wilson Elementary, again, using Wilson as its, uh, as its meeting place. Uh, and finally, uh, Wilson, the Wilson Elementary uh, campus represents uh, the, the only playground uh, in the area accessible without having to cross major, uh, major roadways. Uh, if that building is closed, it, my, uh, my family and my daughters will have to uh, go on a much farther, much more dangerous walk to get to a neighborhood playground. Uh, I want to uh, finish by uh, uh, look, taking a quick glance at the, at the data, uh, looking at the, the enrollment numbers, which has been mentioned, uh, uh, are a couple years out of date. Uh, but I want to emphasize that uh, Wilson itself showed the smallest degree of, of drop of enrollment at, at a mere 9%. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right, then we have uh, Caleb Berkshire. Hello. My name is Caleb Berkshire. I live at 934 South 56th Street, West Dallas. Um, First of all, apologies for my disheveled appearance. I ran here literally right after I got off of work. So um, first of all, I was, I was here mainly to you know, speak about the consolidation, uh, mainly as just a citizen that loves living in West Dallas. And I think that West Dallas is an amazing community with a lot to offer, um, including our great education system. Um, you know, I'm not an expert. I don't have the wisdom of many of the teachers here. Um, nor do I have any kids in the school district. So really, all I wanted to say was I just wanted to provide encouragement uh, during this process. And uh, as a reminder that these decisions should be made, first of all, of course, with the best, uh, you know, the best uh, thoughts for the students, first of all, but also the teachers working there, the administrators, the administrators serving it. Um, a lot of times I think there is a, uh, you know, a tendency to view things in terms of things like profitability, you know, sustainability, and, and those are important factors, but school is not a business. School is a service. We pay for the service. And I would challenge you to find a community that is better because of fewer educational options, especially when it comes to public education. In the state of Wisconsin here, our public education system already fail, faces enough backlash and attacks against it um, through multiple fronts. Um, you know, that was really all I had to say on that remark. Um, you know, furthermore, I just, I had a quick thought that occurred to me uh, as I was sitting here and enjoying people's speeches. I, I do want to remind you that my pronouns are he and them, and that I am glad we have teachers and schools that recognize that cultures change and humanity progresses. And I just want you guys to continue to have that in your minds that there are plenty of vocal people in this community that I'm sure show up to this meeting twice a month, but there's probably even more watching silently and more so uh, watching how you guys uh, conduct yourselves through your tenures. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> that is all I have signed up right now for public comments. I, as always, will leave uh, 30 seconds to allow anyone who may have joined the Zoom meeting late we like to sign up again. The link for that uh, sign up is in the chat. Or if there's anyone who is in the audience who'd like to run and sign up now too, I also give you the opportunity to do that if you'd want to. But
Seeing none, we'll close public comments at this time. And we'll move on to item nine, our board reports, starting with item 9.1, review of the board calendar. So today is May 9th, and we have a <coughs> board of education meeting immediately followed by a workshop on our guaranteed and viable curriculum. On Monday, May 16th at 6 p.m., we have a workshop communication committee, as well as a board workshop with consultant Drew Howick, which will start uh, that portion of the workshop will start at 7 p.m. On Monday, May 23rd at 6 p.m., we have a regular board of education meeting. And on Monday, June 13th at 6 p.m., we have a regular board of education meeting, followed by a workshop proposed 22-23 budget and preliminary tax levy number two. Uh, so now we'll move on to our appointments of district parliamentarian, our CISA number one delegate in WASB delegate and WASB alternate. So this will take those in order. Um, so every year we appoint um, these items out of our board and uh, oftentimes we'll ask for volunteers for it. And so parliamentarian is first. Sure. And, and, and right. Jeff has been our parliamentarian for some time now on the board. Um, so I guess I would inquire if Mr. Sickett would be interested in being parliamentarian. I, I would be happy to do that unless there's somebody here that wants to give it a shot. Otherwise, I've been doing it for so long. I... <laughs> okay. Sometimes don't he need knew, to look at He the knew book. Robert from the Rules of Order. <laughs> <laughs> Good buddy to see with Robert. Uh, is, there, is there any objection? Is, is official action? Is it just no. Oh, yeah, I don't have to okay. So is there anyone else who would like to challenge Mr. Sickich's um, authority as the parliamentarian? <laughs> if not, and Jeff is willing to do it, then I think that he would continue on greatly. So thank you very much for taking thank on that duty you. for us. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. All right. So then we'll move on to our CISO number one delegate, which was Ms. Ms. Carr. And so um, so I guess the first last Ms. Carr, are you interested in, in staying on as a CISO number one delegate? Uh, it, it's not something that I am dying to do. If okay. I, anybody, if I could pass it on to somebody. Is anyone else interested in being CISO number one after Jane's glowing recommendation? <laughs> <laughs> What did you have to do? This you year? just go to the, you actually <coughs> go to a few meetings and you just represent. It's just yeah, you're there as a, yeah. You, you, I can do it. You get if information. Jane doesn't want to do it. All right. So, Jane, you get an arm wrestle or are you just. Is it, well, actually, I should ask, is it like evening meetings? Is it, it is. It okay. Is. And All the right. first meeting is the most important. It's like the one you can't miss. Okay. And because they pick the delegates and everything. And okay. After that, I can do it. Okay, Ms. Steele, any objections to Ms. Steele being our CISO one? Just have to ask that. All right. Thank you, Ms. Steele. Congratulations on your new. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we have move on to our WASB delegate. So I believe Ms. Kaiser was our WASB delegate. Are you interested in that yes. again? I'd love to stay on. Okay. And uh, so is there anyone else who's interested in being our WASB delegate? I guess just ask that question. So far, I was hoping for some armor. She can't lose. Seeing, well. seeing none. Uh, Miss Kaiser will continue on as our WASB delegate. And who was our alternate? I it was Jeff. Mr. Sickich, do you want to continue on as the alternate? Oh sure. Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone else? Nobody, it, I say that just, but, but if, yeah. if something comes up where she can't make it because it's during the day, yeah, being off, yeah, yeah. works out nice. That could be the highlight of my. Day. I saved my PTO for that for that two days though. I I really loved it. Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So is everyone all right with Ms. Geyser continuing on as our delegate and Mr. Sickich as our alternate? Definitely. Yep. All right, that makes things simple. And we'll move on to our committee board reports. So item 9.3.1, like Red Minister College and Career Readiness, uh, preparation, I'm sorry, yeah. that changed on me. Uh, Ms. Kaiser. All right, I got both tonight. So tonight we met with uh, Steve Carr and we are actually going to move forward with having a trades signing day. So you always see the athletics, um, getting their scholarships and uh, uh, learning scholarships, but we really wanna celebrate our kids who are doing apprenticeships and going into industry because that is everything we are building for it, these kids to have a future past school. So it'll probably be tentative date early June. And I'm very excited for that for our kids. And we're gonna um, make that an annual thing. Uh, I brought forth the issue and uh, we are gonna be working on this of a non-voting student representative to join the board, possibly two. It's something that the board will have to look at. How do we have kids nominated for this position? Um, I've been told currently the students who come from Central or Hale and report to us, it's kind of a similar role, but I know other school districts in the state do have a non-voting student representative who is there to 
share ideas and help us with someone in the building. And so we'll have to work on what does that look like? What would the application process look like? And all that is details, but it's something I think as a board, we are missing that voice beyond just reporting what's going on, having a, maybe another opinion in the room. Um, we talked about our ESSER three money. We have to spend 20% of the ESSER three amount on learning recovery over the next three years. Uh, this first year with the ESSER three funding, we are looking at part of it to use on our K-5 fifth through fifth grade math curriculum. That's gonna be new. We cannot use money on ongoing financial needs, which we as a board are very well of. We cannot be spending one-time monies on ongoing staffing. Um, possible stipends for more HOPE squad monitor um, monitors in the buildings, possibly moving into Pearls for Girls program, which is uh, my daughter is a part of at FLW. It's a wonderful program, bringing that to possibly all the schools. And um, our Panorama contract was, is being renewed through this. In years two and three, uh, we are working out what that looks like. And that's it for me for that, that one. All right, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Kaiser or the committee? Jane? So yeah, can you just in, enlighten me a bit about the student representative. Mm -hmm. what, what would that look like? Would they join the, every meeting? Yeah, and so other districts do have a student that sits with the board. They're there as a student year that they can ask, you know, go back to the school and say, here's what's going on at the board level. Cause I know I was not watching board meetings at 17, 18 years old, but there are kids who are going into poli, poli sci, who are going to communications, who are going into other leadership roles who would like to see, you know, have more of a voice. Um, we have to see how that looks, you know, what we as a board would, would like to do. But I think if we are missing that voice on our board where we can have interactions with somebody and say, what do you think is going on? And we have three very different high schools. So what does that look like from each standpoint? We'll have to hash it out. And I think this is something I would like to see done this year. I was gonna say the yeah. same kind of thing. Is there like a student government, <clears throat> excuse me, is there like a student government in each building that could support them and they work as a representative? Yeah, all the schools have a government. Have Central has a black student union as well. There are numerous people who are in those positions that we could talk about. Like, is that something they take on as school president? Or is this a separate entity? We have to hash that out. I would be curious to find out how many one high school places have it where it's easy to just say, okay, it's going to be from that high school. We're dealing with three. Sure. Somebody's going to think they're getting slighted. Sure. Um, yeah. Can I respond to that? Yeah, please. Um, actually, if you look in your last school, the not this issue, but if I would encourage all board members to read in school news, the issue before mm -hmm. they actually talked about it elmbrook actually has representatives and they have one from each high school mm -hmm. so actually in our committee we did i did say that i would like us to see us have represent because it also yeah. allows kind of similar how we rotate with our students now mm -hmm. it also allows if, if you know teenagers have busy schedules so oh, yeah. um they talked about in the article about how they kind of can alternate mm -hmm. um also then if the kids know about certain things that like might directly impact them they can come back with maybe some feedback from the students but mm -hmm. that was something that i did bring up but i would encourage all of you guys to read that article if you mm -hmm. have school news last um once? not yet this la the last one um i think it has a kid on the front but anyway yeah. i can always bring the article but i think it's really good it's just like two pages but it kind of outlines what they do in elmbrook and that's mm -hmm. i think that'd be kind of they're a comparable district to ours yeah okay. yeah so okay any other questions or anything for the committee to consider during their next meeting? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the communication and community relations board report, item 9.3.2. Ms. Kaiser. Awesome. Me. Uh, we talked about the upcoming school showcase. We have Jefferson, Irving, West Milwaukee, Wilson, Mitchell, Madison. It will start at 6 p.m. the next time we have it. I don't have the date off the top of my head. The 16th, thank you, next week. Um, we will not be having anything before theirs. We'll let the kids go first, present on their projects. Um, it is honestly the best part of our job. So anybody who would like to come watch the workshop or come see more about it, it's the absolute best to see what these kids are learning. Um, we also talked about the faces of West Alice, West Milwaukee project that's been, um, that. Uh, Dr. Stewart has put out. The first one was our sweet Elizabeth from Franklin School. She made the God's Eyes with part of her PBL with support from her art teacher, and she's going to take over the world someday. And it's the mm -hmm. another best part of what we do. So um, that's all we have for that. Okay. Any questions for person or the committee? 
about what you reported on or anything, any items you'd like the communications committee to consider at their next meeting. All right, see now, thank you very much, Ms. Geyser, for those reports. Mm -hmm. um, they'll move on to 9.4, board member reports of community events. Anyone have any community events they'd like to report on? Uh, Ms. Kaiser. Um, last week, I had the honor of going to the Frank Lloyd Wright uh, choir concert. Full disclosure, my daughter is in it, but also I always love going to the choir concerts. Um, I want to apologize to everyone who heard me weeping because it was such a beautiful concert. Emily Newberger, who is the choir director there, is phenomenal. The way that she gets all these kids, I mean, middle school is no joke. And she has all those kids, eyes on her, interactive. She has every kid who wants to participate singing. And it's beautiful as a teacher, a formal special ed teacher. It's beautiful to see. Um, it was a wonderful experience. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else have an event they would like to share? Ms. Deal? Oh, my Mine's on an, uh, well, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and I just wanted to do a shout out to, oh, well, obviously our, our teachers and staff, but also to our PTAs. Our PTAs are, um, I think we're one of the strongest districts. We have a PTA in almost every one of our schools, and actually this year I'm on the board, um, I should disclose, I'm on the board for the PTA Council. We had a great time on Wednesday going around and we dropped up Carrie's Krispies treats and t-shirts to all the staff. So, I mean, I just want to, I, I don't, I think sometimes we don't we forget about our PTAs and how much work they do. And I think they, they did an awesome job, at least from my Facebook, when I saw all the different goodies that was uh, given to our staff and our teachers, I just think it's, it's important for that we recognize all those families out there that, that made last week really special for, for everyone. So. Thank you. Jeff. I'd like to give a shout out to Robin Yutke at Jefferson. She invited me and maybe some other board members for their 4K, 5K sing. It was, I was there. I was going to talk about it. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It <laughs> was <laughs> great. There had to be at least 25 future Frank Sinatras. <laughs> it was called City Dog Meets Country Frog. Oh. And the principal read the book and then they stopped and the kids sang it. It, it was, it was really, really well done. Fantastic. Yeah. I would have paid to see that performance. Yeah, he was, <laughs> they were so cute. I'm sure they'll take it, Jeff. <laughs> Donations are allowed. Anyone else, any other items from the community we'd like to report on? I'll just take opportunity. I was able to go and see the SpongeBob musical. I know that a number of our board members were able to go see it earlier during the first weekend. I went and saw it the second weekend with my two kids, and I thought it was phenomenal. Um, I can be a little bit critical when it comes to musicals, as I did that when I was in my younger days myself. <laughs> uh, but I thought it was really great. The the voices that we have in our district are are quite amazing, and the stage presences that they have, and the varied uh, you know roles that they took on. I just I was very impressed with it. And the dancing is something I was never that great at. So I'm always impressed people can do that. So <laughs> just want to say, you know, once again, uh, kudos to everyone involved in that production, uh, students, uh, the staff that were helped uh, you know, with rehearsals and everything like that. And of course, uh, Mr. Pollard for organizing the whole thing. So just wanted to comment on that. So. I'll quickly second that. Mm -hmm. oh, it was an amazing show. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Fantastic. All right. So uh, we'll move on to our consent agenda. We have... Uh, four items this evening. Item 10.1 is the improve, approval of minutes from our regular Board of Education meeting on April 25th, as well as our board workshop on May 2nd. We have the item 10.2, the employment summary. Item 10.3, the supplementary contracts. And item 10.4, which is the approval for our continued use of facsimile signatures. Does anybody need anything separated? If not, look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that passes. All right, so let's move on to our action items this evening. 11.1, .1, international travel for high school students to West Africa, spring of 2023. Uh, Ms. Raymer and Ms. Engelkmeyer. You can come over here. So I will pass it right over to you. Okay. I just first want to thank you so much for the support with the travel we've been doing. We had our trip to Senegal over spring break, and I hope you were able to see some of the slides that we had posted through our wonderful communications people. And it's been 
a growing experience. It's been an eye-opening experience. It's been wonderful for the kids that went. We had profs that went, other teachers that went. Um, it was wonderful. So we would like to have the opportunity, if possible, to go again in spring break again. Um, we have the same sort of thing where we'll go to Senegal, go to Dakar. And this time, we're going to be staying at the Global for Center for Global Learning. So whereas before we were traveling all the way around, going to different places and doing our different activities, this time we're going to have a base at the Center for Global Learning and then take our trips out from there when we go to the Animal Refugee Center, when we go to the Bird Center. And then we'll be staying based there so that we can do our batiking workshop and do our cooking workshop and doing our, have a Wolof lesson. We'll have Wolof lessons and we'll have French lessons. So we're having a little bit more grounded with um, the experience for the kids. So um, it would be over spring break again. And we're looking forward to even more participation and having it be a wonderful culturally moving experience for our students. And again, I thank you for how great it's been. Any questions? I just have one, just out of curiosity. I see it's like 19 days. How many days do you spend traveling? Like flying there? We, it's not 19, it's nine. nine. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Phew, I was gonna say 19 days. <laughs> <laughs> It's it takes us two days to get there because oh. of the time change. And then when we come back, we pick up our day. Oh, so we oh. get back Sunday. Oh, yeah. Interesting. yeah. And we like last time we flew through Brussels and changed planes in Brussels and went on. Any other questions? That look for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you for taking our students. All right, move on to item 11.2, wage adjustment for educational assistance. Uh, Ms. Marshall. Good evening, and once again, I'm following a fantastic trip, so <laughs> I'm noticing a trend here. So. Okay, well, anyways, thank you. Um, the reason I'm here today is in regards to um, increasing our starting salaries for our educational assistants and our special educational assistants. Currently, um, the starting wage for uh, the EAs is $11.88 an hour. And our um, spediers is at thirteen forty eight, and as is outlined in the um, proposal that we sent, that's not even a livable uh, wage. It also is well below um, our competitors in Cecil one, and um, I um, also include found a salary survey um, from the southeastern um, uh, district of schools. Um, in this adjustment, in order to avoid what we call compression, which occurs when um, starting salaries are raised, um, the folks um, who have been with us for some time are below that. In order to avoid that, we have uh, proposed a schedule that is based on uh, the years that they started with the district um, to eliminate some of that compression. It will affect 53% of the um, uh, SPEDIAs and the EAs. There are individuals who will not see an adjustment based on this rate. It is within budget. We've been working on this since October. <laughs> so a lot of time and energy um, and great thought has been given to this. Um, and as we gear up for um, our recruitment, um, we are asking this to go in effect as of July the 1st. So this is both a change to the starting salary and a rate adjustment for some of our current staff. Yes, if they're below, um, if they're currently below um, the rate that would be approved. Again, we're trying to avoid compression sure. because it's very discouraging to an employee to work for us for five years and then all of a sudden someone comes in ahead of them. 
Um, it's a common problem. Um, every um, I've worked in several different industries. Um, it is a common problem, but if we can try to address it on the upfront, um, the better off we will be. Questions? And you said 53% would be affected by that? Yes. Um, I ran the um, report today and I just double checked the figures to see who would who would be affected. There are some people who will not see a wage adjustment. Other questions? And someday I'm gonna come with a trip. <laughs> All right, no other question, I look for a motion. Move to approve, second. Moved and seconded. Any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's move on to item 11.3 uh, our school district financial depositories. Dr. Uh, Lexman, I apologize. Fine. Um, thank you. Uh, so the, there's three different um, items that are coming up here that are annual items. Uh, it's required that the board take action each year um, as we kind of lean into the next fiscal year, which starts on July 1. And so what's in front of you with this one is we're seeking board approval. Um, it's really approving a resolution to name the various banks with which we do business and approve them once again for the coming fiscal year and have them there in the executive summary in the form of the resolution, and you'll see the various banks um, where, where they're located. And we've been doing business with them for a number of um, years, right? Some are really the managing kind of cash flow and checking accounts and those kind of things. And then there's a set around investments, you know, where dollars come in and we do work to invest and gain a little bit of interest income. Um, because if you recall, dollars come in and kind of lump sums from the state, and then we kind of use that. So it makes sense to have some investment banks as well. Um, as we're using those dollars, they can be invested for income purposes. So again, it's an annual item, and um, we're hoping for um, support to approve. Questions? Jeff? Just uh, this, not necessarily pertaining to this one thing, but could we take 9.3 down to uh, 11, I mean, 11.3? Down 11.6 as a group because it's all just annual. Annual. Yeah. Does anyone have any objections? Any questions for any of them? Is there any questions about so the other 11.4 is the release of the 2023 purchase orders, and 11.5 is the 22 23 delegation of leasing authorities. These are annual items we have to do it every year, it's required mm -hmm. by state statute. Uh, but essentially, it's a, a housekeeping item that we do every year. Yeah. And currently, just for the clarity, 11.5, the, the only property we currently lease is Parkway to season one. Yeah, I have no problem. Yeah, I, I, that, yeah. I would then move that we approve 11.3, 11.4, 11.5, and 11.6. I second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any last minute discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that gets to 11.7. Uh, individual contract extension of administrators and at will employees. Um, similar to the above, it is an annual item as well. I uh, um, appreciate it being separated out. Uh, the board um, recently took action, right, approving the release of teacher contracts. And we typically follow, you know, once we go through the process with teachers, the individual contract extensions for administrators and at will employees. You know, for our new board members, administrative contracts in the state of Wisconsin are two-year contracts that automatically roll forward unless, um, you know, through a recommendation from the administration and the board's action to interrupt that. Um, but um, this this would kind of permit us then to execute those contracts, and those contracts then would include the 4.7 percent um, base wage increase that was approved for all employees through previous board action. So that's where we are kind of in the process at will are not actually contracts, even though generally we speak of them as if they're contracts, mm -hmm. um, but it really is more of an employment agreement and those are one year, um, oh. right? So that it's different because they're not administrative and they don't require administrative certification. And that's why with administrative certification, you fall under a different area of the statutes. Questions? If not, I look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. And second it. Any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. 
that passes. All right, with that, that ends our action items for this evening. So I would move to take a five minute recess. All right, and then we'll come back for the workshop. Thank you. We are at recess. All right, Oh, you're on okay oh wow Whoa. 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 okay so we have a ladies. workshop this evening on our guaranteed bible curriculum and we have a number of staff members here this evening Ms. Reimer, i'll hand it off to you yep um and i'm gonna back up a bit um so thank you again this is you know exciting for our board when they get a chance to interact with our staff and so similar to our workshop around student services Tonight are our different curricular areas um, that the board will get to engage with. Our music team is busy in full-fledged concert season. Um, so we have the handout for you on when all the spring concerts are, and that would be the best place to see their work in action. Um, but I also shared some notes with the board so you kind of knew a rough idea of who's doing, who are the curricular leads for each area, and then some of the goals for each one of our curricular areas. Um, so we won't delay it any longer than that outside of to get you going in the rotations, you're going to have seven minutes at each one. Um, and I'm going to be strict Stick on the timekeeping as it is getting late. And there may or may not be some other things going on that most people are watching on their phone <laughs> as we are sitting here having this conversation. <laughs> also, wow. wow. I, and it is not due to a lack of dedication to our staff and the work we are doing in our district in any way, shape, or form. But we do want to make sure that you get the opportunity to hear from staff as well as um, get the opportunity to get out of here at a reasonable hour. So I'm going to be strict on the time at the seven minutes per station. Um, we have some guest partners to go around with some of our board members. Um, Noah and Rebecca, if you don't mind making a pair and going around to the stations together, and then we have Mr. Miller, our coordinator of innovation, who oversees our GCT department and our physical education department. Alicia Roush, our coordinator of culturally relevant practices, who also oversees our EL department and our world language department. We have Mr. Summerfield, who's the assistant principal at Central. 
Ms. Pluta, who's the principal at Wilson, and then Ann Lack, who's our coordinator of inclusionary practice. Um, so she oversees all of our work with our um, special education staff. And so um, the rest of our board members will pair up with one of these fine individuals to travel around to the different stations so that if you have a question, you can get that answered. And then Marty will also be a partner with somebody as well. And then we should have exactly pairs of two to go around to each station for seven minutes and then get your questions answered and kind of learn about all of the absolutely incredible work that these individuals do every day. So we pair with someone here and then go. You can pair with somebody here or you can pair with Marty. Sorry. <laughs> I know nobody wants to leave it. You were <laughs>